The PIX32 that we use, ARMA NU32, does not have a peripheral called a DAC, DAC, or Digital to Analog Converter. It doesn't have the ability to just output any old voltage that you want on a pin. We only have digital output pins, so we can only output 0 volts or 3.3 .3 volts. Okay, that's not quite true. The, the PIC actually does have two pins that can output uh, analog voltages, but they're for a specific use. They're not general purpose for just making any old voltage. So how can we make a voltage uh, using this PIC32? We have two options. One is we can get an external chip that is a DAC, and we can communicate with it using SPI or I2C communication. We can tell it what voltage we want to make, and then it would make it. Uh, that's some cost because those chips um, are usually a few dollars. So instead, we'll try to use PWM, our uh, pulse wave generator, uh, into an analog filter called a low-pass filter to smooth out our uh, square wave and make a nice smooth output voltage. So we're going to use a simple uh, RC uh, low-pass filter. There are lots of low-pass filter designs out there. This is probably the least expensive one because it uses a single resistor and a single capacitor. That means it's not a particularly good low-pass filter, so we'll see some rules of thumb for how to choose that R and C. Um, so we'll take our uh, PWM voltage. This is the digital pin from um, the PIC, and we'll go into a resistor that's in series with a capacitor to the ground. And the output will be our analog voltage. Ideally, if we choose our R and C correctly. If you've never used one of these RC low-pass filters before, um, what it does is it takes the input voltage and passes a magnitude of voltage output depending on the frequency of the input. So if we put a sine wave of 1 hertz here, we will get a sine wave with 1 hertz frequency of the output, and depending on the RC combination, the magnitude might come out exactly the same, or it might come out attenuated or made smaller. The PIC, of course, can only output PWM square wave, so if this frequency is low enough, lower than what we call the cutoff frequency of the RC filter, the analog signal that comes out will be exactly the same. But as we increase the frequency of the PWM, the analog signal will smooth out the high frequency components of the square wave leaving just the average. So there's a curve associated with the RC low-pass filter that looks like this. So here's the magnitude at a specific frequency of signal. And um, if the input is 1, then the output would be 1. But at some cutoff frequency, so we call this the uh, cutoff frequency, or the knee frequency, any frequency of signal that comes out starts to be attenuated or made smaller. So that means that over here at this frequency, its magnitude that comes out would only be, and this is usually on a log, log plot, so that might only be uh, one-tenth or one-hundredth as big as it was before. Let's uh, take a look at what that means in terms of voltage. So let's pretend this is our uh, PWM coming in. It's low for a while, and then it goes high. So the output voltage will be low until the input transitions. When the input transitions, well, there's initially zero volts across the capacitor, and the voltage that we're plotting here is the voltage across the capacitor. So initially, the voltage is zero. And then that means that the uh, voltage is completely across the resistor. That would set the amount of current that goes through the resistor. So the 3.3 .3 volts from the PWM divided by R is the current. That current uh, through the capacitor gets integrated and the voltage across the capacitor begins to rise. But as we get more and more voltage across the capacitor, that means there's less across the resistor, so there's less current going through the capacitor. That means uh, the rate of charge for the capacitor is decreasing, so we get a smooth um, curve that ASIM, um, uh, approaches the output voltage that uh, our pin is, so 3.3 .3 volts. Eventually, um, if we give it enough time, the voltage across the capacitor will approach 3.3. .3. And then when the voltage goes back down again, when the pin goes low, we would get a downwards curve back towards zero. So the interesting, that happen, interesting thing that happens here is because the RC ratio is fixed, 
Um, when we start to have a faster PWM, like that, the uh, capacitor can charge and then discharge and charge and discharge. And it doesn't have enough time to fully charge and fully discharge. So you can see it starts to um, have less peak to peak motion. Uh, so it starts to approach a smooth constant. So if we choose our R and C correctly, uh, compared to the frequency of our PWM, we should be able to generate a nice constant smooth output. But of course, that is also going to limit how fast we can change that voltage. So let's take a look at an example of this on an N scope. So an N scope is an um, inexpensive uh, and portable oscilloscope power supply and function generator. In this case, the function generator part is, is the interesting aspect. So instead of using PWM from the pick, um, I'm going to use the pulse output from the end scope. So I just turned on the P1 pin. Uh, I should probably tell you my full circuit diagram here. Um, so for PWM, I'm using the P1 pin on the end scope, and I'm reading that pin with uh, channel 1 on the end scope, and then the output the voltage across the capacitor I'm reading with channel 2. It's always nice to see the, both the input and the output to the filter to see exactly what's happening. Okay, back to N-scope. So, uh, the pulse uh, coming from um, the P1 pin is 1 hertz and 50% duty cycle, so we see a nice 1 hertz square wave here. Then we can zoom in in time, usually when we're looking at this kind of signal, we only want to see one or two square waves uh, on our entire screen. I'll turn on channel two, and we should see the voltage from uh, the RC filter. So we see the capacitor charge and discharge. And I tell you the uh, value of R and C here, but they are a uh, 100K uh, resistor and a one microfarad capacitor. So that means that it, it's, it's, a, it's around a one or 10 hertz filter. Uh, well, we should see that in a second. So let me increase um, my frequency of uh, PWM. We'll go to 3 hertz. And already we can see the effect that the capacitor doesn't have time to charge and discharge. And if I go to uh, faster, there's 7 hertz. The peak to peak of our output is smaller. If I go to 18 hertz, if I go to 150 hertz, and at this point I should probably be zooming in in time. My end scope is notoriously buggy when uh, trying to use my screen capture system. My computer just can't handle the load. I'll turn everything back on. 100 hertz. I'm gonna hit the stop button here. Okay, well, I can override whatever I do. Go to frequency, increase my duty, and then I'll increase my duty. So, an interesting thing that's happening here is we can see. Um, the green line, that's the voltage from the capacitor bouncing up and down with, the du with our 50% um, duty cycle. So the green line is approximately half of our total range. In this middle area, I decrease the duty cycle. So now, on average, the voltage is lower. And here I increase the duty cycle, so now on, on average the voltage is higher. Let's see what that looks like if we zoom in. So here's a high duty cycle. The red line is mostly high. We see the average of the green line is high. If I decrease the duty cycle, now the average is low. Um, what else can we tell? How smooth is the green line's curve? Uh, not very smooth. Uh, we're still letting it rise and fall a lot. So let me increase the frequency of the PWM. We'll go 200 hertz, and then we'll zoom in in time. Now we can no longer see the green line both rise and fall. The red line is kind of hitting it like a hammer. It's pulsing it. Um, it doesn't have the inertia to uh, move very fast. Um, so we've got a pretty smooth signal. 
So something about the ratio of my R and C and the input frequency of my uh, pulse width modulation determines how smooth it is, but will also determine how quickly the green line could change. So I will jump from 14% duty cycle to 60, and we can see there was a curve there, like an RC curve, that decided how quickly the green line was able to change. So even though I'm discreetly going from 22% duty cycle to, I don't know, 78% uh, duty cycle, it still can't do it instantly, also due to the filtering effect. So how do we choose the frequency of our PWM and the RC uh, resistors for our filter? Um, we would want to look at the specs for whatever project we're trying to solve. So here's a uh, frequency graph, um, and here are maybe the voltages or something. Uh, let's say that we were trying to make voltages uh, between these frequencies. So these are our desired uh, frequencies uh, and voltages. So maybe I'm passing PWM into this RC filter. The analog voltage I'm trying to make out is a sine wave, and I want to go from 0 to maybe, say, 10 hertz. So I want to be able to make any frequency of sine wave between 0 and 10 hertz because that's what's going to, I don't know, an LED, and I'm trying to blink that LED. Um, now I know I'm uh, going to go into a cutoff frequency of a low-pass filter, and the input to that is the frequency of my PWM. So a good rule of thumb is that um, if we are trying to make 10 hertz sine waves, the fastest uh, that our spec says, the cutoff frequency for our low pass filter should be at least a factor of 10 in frequency away from it. Um, that's because the shape of this curve um, is not very sharp. You know, ideally the filter would kind of be like, keep everything, delete everything, but it doesn't do that. Um, so to make sure that we're filtering out frequencies um, uh, so on, on this kind of curve, we're saying that here are the frequencies we're trying to make. We should keep away from anything that might be attenuated by a factor of 10 in that direction. Same thing here. Um, if we are passing in PWM to a filter, we want the uh, PWM frequency to be at least 10 times greater than the frequency of the cutoff filter. So the PWM will definitely be smoothed out. So our PWM is way over here. It's being smoothed out by the cutoff frequency. This one is much uh, lower amplitude than this one, so it's getting cut off. And then here is the frequency at which we're changing the duty cycle. Um, it is not changing rapidly enough to be filtered out by the filter that we are using to filter the PWM into the analog voltage. So um, sometimes you work backwards. You choose a PWM, uh, go to a cutoff frequency, and then that would set the maximum rate at which you could change your analog voltage. Or sometimes you go the other way, uh, you're given a spec I need to change at least 10 hertz, so I would use a cutoff frequency of 100 hertz. My PWM would have to be at least 1,000 hertz. Why does that matter? Well, the PWM frequency is dependent on the PR value that we chose for our timer, and the number of duty cycles, OCRs, or RCRSs, is a number between 0 and PR. So if we are forced to use a very small PR value to get a very high frequency for our PWM, we won't have many duty cycles that we can choose. So this is related to our resolution. The higher the frequency of our PWM, the lower the resolution or the number of discrete duty cycles we're allowed to use. And the number of duty cycles corresponds directly to the number of different analog voltages that we can make. So those are the things you need to keep in mind when you're trying to make an analog voltage by using PWM and a low-pass filter.